Come on, get in. It is time for a new adventure with Trippin' with Silver Daddy. I'm so excited. We're going to Ebor City. One of my favorite places. I don't know. So I don't know how many of you have been there, but Ebor City is so cool. I know I've been there, let me count, one, two, three, four, about five times. I am so excited about this place. If you don't know about this place, it's like this little neighborhood in Tampa. And it's just so unique and special. Oh, I just love this area. I've been there. My first time, I think, was when we went on a cruise. Because it's right by the cruise ship port where all the cruise ships go out. So it does get a lot of cruising people. Not my kind of cruising people. But the cruise ship people that tend to go. So make sure... There's no ships in port, because then it can be a cruising area, which I like. But it is so cool there. There are so many things you can do. Well, let's just start with, oh my God, I forgot to tell you. One time I was there, we got to go find this place. I was actually there one time, and I went to this haunted place. Don't want to give it away. I want to try to go there and see if I can interview. It's really haunted. It's really scary. Oh, and they also have ghost tours. We can go on a ghost tour. This is going to be a fun adventure, everyone. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to meet a lot of neighbors. And we're going to have a good time together. Almost sound like Mr. Rogers, ain't I? We're going to have fun. We're going to meet the neighbors. And you're all going to be good and behaved. So get in the car. Let's go. So, Ybor City. A little bit about it. You know, it's a historical place. It's been around forever. So it's a historical neighborhood. has a lot of historical buildings. But, like I said, it's right just outside of downtown and by the cruise ships. So the buildings are really cool. A lot of, you know, architectural stuff. So this has been around for a while. It's a really famous area, especially for cigars. This area at one time was like one of the number one producing of cigars. It used to be called Cigar City in USA. And there's still some old cigar factories there. Um, actually, the city's named after a guy who worked with all these cigar companies and brought them all together, a guy named Ebor. Um, Vincent, I think his name was. And he was like... He was ahead of the times in what he would do for people, you know. And he recruited and got all these young Cuban men and Spanish men to come there and work. Oh, my God. Can't ask for anything more exciting, young Cuban men. Oh, God. This is better than the area of Miami. It's better than probably when I was in Cuba. This is going to be so much fun. Oh, Cuban men, let me tell you. I've been to Cuba. We could do a whole show about the Cuba. Uh, it was such an adventure. And the Cuban men and women are just beautiful. The men with their big, bulging biceps, muscles, was just... Oh, it's a daddy dream. We're going to have so much fun. You better all behave and don't get me in trouble. But it was really big. A lot of Cuban influence in the area. Um, but there's a lot of Spanish influence. The last time I was there, I ate at a great Colombian restaurant. The food there. Oh, my God. The food is so good. Oh, I'm just so excited about this place. And there's so much. So... Not only is the food good, but it's also just a great little neighborhood. But back to this guy, the Ebor guy, who worked, who did a lot of this um, cigar stuff. You know, I was saying he was ahead of his time because what he did is he made this neighborhood and then they established a lot of like grocery stores print shops, everything right in the neighborhood. But what he did 
that was really amazing and way before its time. Remember, people, this is in United States of America. This guy actually built these really small houses for his workers, and they were called casitas. I believe that's the word they used. They were small homes that he would sell to his workers at cost. Not to make a profit, he'd sell it to them at cost because he wanted them to live in the neighborhood where they worked. Now, listen to this. This guy, Mr. Ebor, also provided free medical to his workers. Yes, in the United States. Can you imagine that? There was free medical at one time. Businesses paid 100% all the medical costs to keep employees there. God, where was I? Free medical, cheap housing, Cuban boys and Spanish. Oh my God, I should have been living back then. But like I said, there's a lot of things here in this city that's historical. There's over like 2,000 historical buildings. It's going to be a great time. But then the whole area, naturally, everything that goes good and everything that's working well, there's always a downside. And that was the Depression. You know, back in the 1930s, the Depression hit, then World War II, and then the desire for cigars, people couldn't afford it, sales dropped, everything fell apart. So, like usual, the whole area that was this booming, wonderful community kind of started to all fall apart. Hey everyone, we're going to be right back and we're going to find out how Ybor City became the gay neighborhood starting in the 80s. But please listen to our sponsors. I have the most beautiful luxury home for you, and it's for sale. And if you don't want it, buy it from me, Silver Daddy. It is right in Wilton Manors. We can live in the gayest area of the United States. It's at 12 Northeast 26th Street. This house is beautiful, and it is set for having parties. Let me tell you, on the first floor, everything opens to a huge deck that actually has a roof over it so you don't get wet, and there is a swimming pool, and the swimming pool has a waterfall. The entire property is surrounded with palm trees. We can get naked. And upstairs, off the bedrooms, there's a huge deck with a jacuzzi. Hey, I took a lot of pictures. Go to my website and check it out. And, you know, it's actually a steal. It's only $1.5 million. So buy it for me. Go to trippinwithsilverdaddy.com. And then it was back in the 80s. The artist... We're looking for local artists. We're looking for cheap places to establish businesses. And artists never care where they go as long as they got to get a place that was cheap enough and they could put all their art. So there was all these warehouses. So the artists all started moving in. You know, and that was back in the 80s. They all started coming in. You get all these artists starting to come in. And then what always follows the artist? The gay community <laughs> comes in. And once the gay community all comes in, you know, things can't look just normal. So they have to upgrade everything, clean everything up, remodel everything. And now it is again this beautiful neighborhood. Actually, now a lot of people call it Gaybor City. So just to give you an idea, there's a lot of... LGBTQ+, plus all that, you know, the gay community, is really embracing this area. So, it has really changed. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to go to a, a cigar place, try to find one. I, that shouldn't be hard, because the last time I remember, there was like at least one or two on every, you know, every block there was. 
Oh, maybe get some great food. Ghost tours. They have ghost tours at night. We got to go on a ghost tour. Got to be there at night and go on a ghost tour. I know I'll pee in my pants. Don't tell anyone. So I'll take extra clothing. I don't know why. I love ghost tours. I love scary things. But I get scared so fast. So I don't know why I enjoy that. And we're going to go find this place. I'll tell you about it later. I'm going to try to do something from this place. I've been there. It's scary as uh, all. It's just scary. Let me tell you. But it's so much because we're going to be right in the Tampa Bay area. Ah, There's so many things we could do there. Not just that, but I mean not just that neighborhood. One of my favorite beaches, Clearwater, is just over the bridge. St. Petersburg. Oh, and then there's the big state park that's just north of there. Oh, my God, we're going to have so much fun, everyone. This is going to be an exciting show. I hope you can't wait. Hey, if you ever have any comments or questions, make sure you email me at trippinwithsilverdaddy at gmail.com. Hey, everyone, when I come back, I'm going to tell you about tomorrow's podcast here on YouTube, and that's going to be Season 1, Episode 4, B, as in boy. I'll be right back. Hey, everyone, do you have that honeydew list or those things around the house that needs fixed and you don't know how to do it? I have the perfect solution. It is Handyman Phil. Yes, Handyman Phil can do just about everything. You know, he does electricity. He does bathrooms, tile, you name it. Handyman Phil can do it. If you're in Broward County in the Fort Lauderdale area and you need something fixed in your house, you need to email Handyman Phil. And how do you email him? You go to handyman3310 at gmail.com and just tell him what you need done. He'll get right back to you. Hey, everyone. If you need someone to fix something in your house, you need Handyman Phil. That's handyman three 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 one zero at gmail.com on tomorrow's episode which will be season one episode four letter b is in boy i'm going to be talking to mike the owner of long ash cigar and it reminded me of the time that i used to spend in the dominican republic so I hope you enjoyed, and please do me a favor. Could you please subscribe to my YouTube channel? And if you would really help me if you could spread the word and tell your friends about my YouTube channel, I would deeply appreciate that. Hey, everyone. You've been listening to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Love, peace, and respect. Bye.